This is How to Cut It in the Hairdressing Industry Podcast Show with Dom Lahane, episode number 146. Welcome to How to Cut It in the Hairdressing Industry Podcast. The show that gives you the insights, inspirations and information to take your hairdressing and barbering careers to the next level. And here's your host, Dom Lahane. Hi and welcome back to How to Cut It in the Hairdressing Industry Podcast Show, the UK and Ireland's number one hair industry podcast since 2017 and produced by Hairy Media Productions. Now this is a podcast show that gives you the insights, inspirations and information to take your hairdressing and barbering careers to the next level. And every week we bring onto the show industry leaders, rising stars, digital influencers and those from the creative, fashion and media industries. My name's Dom Lahane, and today I'm in the company of Matthew Sutcliffe, owner of Tint in Leeds. He was like, no, mate, if, you know, if you're going to do it, you need to sort of, you need to find a gap in the market that nobody's playing in, basically. Why would you, why would you want to set up an employed salon where you have um, people that get these opportunities but not earning this type of money that we're on here you need if you want to find something new and do something uh, you know playing an area that nobody's playing in in the in in the market so there is matthew sutcliffe coming up in today's podcast now matthew is a former l'oreal color trophy winner a brand ambassador for baby bliss creative head it guy british hairdressing awards finalist this guy has achieved so much, an incredibly talented hairdresser. His taste is superb. But why Matthew is coming on today is really to tell us about his journey of how he has created a really unique space in the northern quarter of Leeds City Centre. Because he has set up Tint, a space designed for self-employed hairdressers, but not just any self-employed hairdressers. This is a space that you would really want to be part of because he has brought together the best of employed and the best of self-employed and brought it together in this beautiful space. And he's going to tell us all about this. And he's going to tell us why self-employed hairdressers should have a much better standing in our industry than maybe what they are given. And also, I think it's really going to be an interview that's going to make you realise that you can create this business model really well because, as I say, they have employed and self-employed working together. He's going to tell us how that happens with his trainees being employed. He's going to tell us how education and their art team, all under the Tint banner, is really, really working. I absolutely love this interview and I know it's going to be something that you're going to enjoy in your lockdown. It's a long interview, but we've got plenty of time for it and it's going to be one that you are going to want to hear from start to finish. So delighted to welcome onto the podcast, Matthew Sutcliffe. Now, as we just mentioned in the uh, introduction, that I'm really excited to bring this guy on to the How to Cut It podcast. He is the director, owner of Tint Leads. Matthew Sutcliffe. Welcome to the show, Matthew. Hi, Dom. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Um, I, I never expected you to ever be able to come on here because I've listened to so many of them and there's so many amazing icons on it. Oh, thank uh, you so much. And, well, you know, so many people have achieved amazing things and thanks a lot. I no, appreciate it. It's, it's awesome, um, mate. Well, uh, to be honest, it's it. We we connected some time back, didn't we? And uh, it was a, a hair club live open chair night. And yeah, you know, when you connect with people that you really admire, I, I, you were doing some work then at that time. I think under the for Baby Bliss, if I remember yes, rightly, yes, correct, yes, in, in Liverpool. And I've, I've loved your work, and I've followed your journey ever since, really. And you've done some brilliant things. Uh, and one of that is setting up Tint in Leeds. Uh, yeah, really cool place. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today, Matthew. And here we are, lockdown, April, Easter weekend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Easter Saturday, you know, we should all be working our nuts off and uh, getting ready for the Easter Sunday to have our traditional Easter Easter meal, but very different this year. But yeah, it at is. At least the weather's good, so we can chill out in the garden at least. It is. Honestly, listeners that are not here in the UK, the UK is Sort of bast in sunshine at the moment, which is yeah, it's amazing, it's which really is lovely, really which um, we all need. Um, so look, today, yeah, I want to find out a little bit about Tint, what you're uh, doing with this because you really are creating something a little bit different up there. I love the whole story behind that, and 
the, how you're working self-employed hairdressers, the balance of how you're getting there. Uh, but like always, I like to get to know our hairdressers. But the first question, before I get to know you, how are you finding it in isolation right now? <laughs> uh, probably the same as everybody else in hairdressing. Um, it's it's amazing in in one respect because it gives you opportunity to do things that you can't often do. Uh, it gives you time to reflect. It gives you time to you know spend with your family, and you know it's it's quite a good time in in that respect. But obviously, it's quite it's quite scary at the same time from a business point of view, and you know from. Uh, a country point of view and you know where where we're going to be in six months time where nobody knows really so uh you know i think the answer to that is just i've just got mixed feelings about everything at the moment um trying to keep myself occupied i think that's the key really and then uh, try and uh, ride the waves with the rest of the country. Yeah, that's, well, as you say, we're all in this together. And that really is a little bit around our title today. We're all in this together. So sort of links us in. But before we came on air, I found it really interesting. You were saying about, uh, you know, kind of people listening to podcasts, watching in lives. And you've noticed a real uptake of a younger generation really heavy in posting on, on social media. Oh, yeah, massively. I mean, uh, I think the younger people are really engage with social media anyway. Um as we all know, um, but you know, from my point of view, from looking at social media in the last two weeks or so, I'm seeing a lot more younger people doing like live videos, um, tutorials, um, you know, and things like that. Really, and I think it's down to the fact that they're just, you know, they're at home. They haven't got many commitments like children, like I've got, or uh, you know, having to deal with the business side of things. It's given them an opportunity to um, to be a bit more creative, I guess, and it's given them time to. Um, to just you know promote themselves on social media and everything else so you know good on them really it's really to see is there anything that's caught your attention particularly at the moment oh i'm loving the takeovers um we're gonna do we're gonna do a tint takeover next week actually um i'm loving the takeovers um i haven't got time to watch any of the lives at the moment because a lot of the lives are like um early evening so like seven eight o'clock and we usually put the kids to get to bed at that time so i haven't watched any of them but i'm really liking the takeovers like i said um so you're going to do one with tint did i hear you say then yeah correct yeah so we're just going to work our way through each stylist um each stylist is basically going to do a takeover so we're giving them a, a load of questions uh, then from Monday next week, they're just basically going to be working their way through the questions and adding anything in that they want to do themselves, really. I think it's a really good time for us to sort of uh, connect a little bit more with our clientele. Um, and I think it's a really, really good opportunity to do that, especially with these t- takeovers and um, and also as well with the industry. Is that going to be aimed at the consumers then, Matthew? When you Well, take- yeah, I mean, I think equally with the industry as well. So the way we're running it, basically, we'll say – you know what what type of hairdresser are you say um you know what do you enjoy doing in hair um and what are your achievements blah 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 so that'll connect a little bit more with uh, the clientele but and then they might turn around and say you know within my achievements i've um you know i've done this mood board and the the i don't know the industry might turn around and say oh i really like that mood board you know and he might talk or she might talk about how they've got their inspiration and what they're intended to do with the hair as well. So it actually works both ways, I guess. Wicked. We've sort of gone into this conversation quite uh, organically here, but hey, who cares? Um, it's good. When you say about this, I'm just, before we move on, uh, are you kind of, when you say takeover, so your team members who are, I believe, self employed hairdressers within your establishment? Yes, but, but um, primarily. So we've got a few employed staff, but we'll go okay. into that. We'll get into that in a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So they're going to come into the Tint account, Instagram. They yes. have the login details. I'm just talking sort of very basic, easy steps here so people understand. Yeah, so the first, one of the first things I did when we went to lockdown, I basically said, like, we need to get everybody together here. Like, everybody needs to be part of what we're trying to do with Tint, uh, which they are anyway. But I wanted them to feel like what, what we do on Instagram as well and what we do on our social media. So uh, we've got an art team WhatsApp group and I've given everybody the the WhatsApp, sorry, not the WhatsApp, the Instagram password and account details. And then, um, and then, like I said before, we just work our way through each week and everybody who gets the opportunity to take over the Instagram and uh, run it like Tint, basically. Yeah, and that's really good because it keeps that connection alive, doesn't it, whilst in lockdown for your team. It keeps everybody together because that's a real challenge, isn't it, keeping a team together in this period? 
Exactly. And um, as a brand grows, a lot of the time it becomes quite detached from the the clientele sometimes uh, in a weird sort of way. And uh, especially with social media, a lot of clients become very loyal to the stylist. And I wanted the stylist to have the opportunity to work with tint so the client can pull it back into tint again, basically. So they might they might be following that particular stylist on Instagram, but they might not be following tint. Um, that and that that's fine, but because I think that's because tint scene is a bit more of a a, a brand. Um, I guess a lot more of a how can you say it? Like a bit more of a, a soulless brand brand in some respect because it hasn't got a, a person behind it. So I really wanted to put a person behind that brand basically to pull the client back through into the into tint's Instagram. So that, that's why I think it's a really good idea doing these takeovers. Yeah, so there's a lot of your creativity in this isolation, being around this sort of element. You know, how can we really stay connected as a team? Exactly, speak to our yeah, clients? I think it's so important at the moment. Um, I know Sophia Hillett was talking about it the other day, and I think getting ready for not the lockdown, but the, the aftermath of the lockdown is getting things together like social media. So if anybody's not working with the social media at the moment, I, I you know, I would suggest to be working on that as hard as possible and working out sort of a plan going forward, really, to maintain the clients for when we come out of lockdown. It's going to be mental, it's, isn't it? It is going to be. Exactly, yeah. I, I think it'll be mental for the first few months, but if there is a recession, I mean, I read, I read the other day that they reckon 50 million people will become uh, unemployed within the next year. So if there is a global recession... Well. Yeah, it's going to affect each globally, and every one of us. Not, not in England, uh, yeah. not just in England, but if you know, if it's a global thing, um, there's obviously not going to be as much money around, and unfortunately, you know, people have to make sacrifices. So we need to sort of keep engaged and try and keep the clients coming in, basically, and being being the forefront. Yeah, well, perfect. We'll come back round to that. Actually, that's yeah, really interesting to hear your thoughts on it. But I want to learn a bit more about Tint and what you're doing because it is. It's a unique concept. Uh, you know, I've, I've looked into it a lot. I love what you're doing. But I think it's always nice, firstly, for our listeners to get a real understanding of our guests and those that don't know of you, Matthew. Uh, just give everybody a, a bit of a back sort of history to you as a hairdresser and, you know, what you're involved in, some of your achievements. Yeah, so a bit of a brief background. Basically, I went, I went into hairdressing from a really, really young age. I, I wanted to hairdress from the earliest I can remember, really. So I went into it. Um, I did a work experience at school. <laughs> um, I did. I did. I worked in a little salon um, quite close to my house, basically, and I absolutely loved it. So they took me on after school. I did like two years training there, and and then by that time I was like eighteen, and I got a bit sidetracked uh, and ended up in Magaluf for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, it wasn't <laughs> really how do. my career sort of, uh, I expected my career to go, but it gave me the same again, give me time to reflect. And by the time I'd done two years in Magaluf and I was absolutely exhausted, I, I said, like, I'm coming home and I'm going to crack on now. And I really want to sort of build my career up. So I came back home and uh, started working for a bigger salon in the city centre, and um, in Leeds City Centre, that is, and spent 10 years there. And I'd, you know, I've got a few accolades under my belt and it gave me the opportunity to learn the industry uh, importantly you know communicate with people and what know, accolades by the way um so yeah i mean a few like we got the um, l'oreal color trophy i won that in 2012 well, that's that's, um, that's, that's no small guy. deal is it matthew let's be totally honest winning l'oreal yeah, color trophy quite... uk l'oreal color trophy we're not talking regional is that you UK, 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 yeah, UK, yeah. So, it, what, what fantastic year that was! I mean, it's 2012, and I had entered it something like eight years in a row, and I've never, ever, ever, ever put so much effort something in my life uh, to that date. That is, um, and it was exhausting. Did it change a lot for you when you think of that magnitude? You know, I've heard these podcasts so many times and so many people say the same thing and they say sometimes it's not it's not the winning that uh, is the important thing. It's the it's the taking part and that process. You can't beat that process. Eight and you would go with that. You agree that's exactly what it's about. It's about the process to get into oh, that. Honestly, amazing. I remember the, the night, well, the day actually we uh, of the final, we were 
in London and you have to go down and do the hair on the day and then it gets judged. And there's like a three hour gap where you get to go back to your hotel and then you get ready and then you go to the final. And I went back to my hotel and like, oh my God, I was just that, like the energy and the, everything that I put into it, the, the way I felt, I've never felt like that before. I just literally like collapsed on the bed for like three hours and my head was just absolutely <laughs> pulsating, you know? I imagine. Well, and uh, we went to the final and, and I really, I just wanted to win it so much. <laughs> you know, I'm actually in my office now and I'm looking at the picture from that night. So I've got a few pictures in here and I've got literally got a picture of that night when we stepped up on stage to collect the, the trophy, the, the feeling that you get. I'd but love to do a podcast actually Amy. built around entering that as in itself because it is it's a massive competi- competition. Whether you're, you're L'Oreal, Weller, Schwarzkopf, whoever, it, it's just it is one of those big competitions that really has some serious weight if you win it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you get a lot of benefits from winning something like that, but um, but it also taught me how to work as a team as well, and I think it's really important to sort of. Um, point out there was a big team behind us there as well and you know people who guided me and guided the team to get to where we are I mean you, I can't ignore that really you know if you're going to win something you need a good team behind you yeah um, so even though I'm traditionally a, well, I'm a director basically I, I like to direct things and pull the right people in and that's basically what I did with that particular competition and um you know, I'm not saying I didn't do any hair, sorry. I did a lot of hair. But um, <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, you know, researching the right people, speaking to the right people and getting the right models and everything else. I like doing all that side of things as well. Uh, and and when we won it, we won it as a team, um, not just me winning it. So it was really good for everybody involved, really. Yeah, and also those accolades included, you what, uh, Creative Heads It Guy, uh, yeah, I think um, I think I think it's the same. Yeah, in fact, I've got the trophy here. That's all up. I've actually got the trophy in the office as well. So I've got Crate Heads, It Guy. I mean, that's uh, a massive it one, isn't it? Oh yeah, sorry, 2012. So it was the same year. Yeah, the Mallorca year. Done your bit. Oh good. yeah, definitely. I mean, like I say, it's like lockdown. It gives you time to reflect. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it did. Yeah, it was a really good opportunity to <laughs> to reflect, and I just knew what I wanted to do when I came back. I was like, right, I'm on it. All right, I need to I need to crack on now. The the whole process was um I basically wanted to uh win some stuff. Um I wanted to build my connections within the industry. Um and I wanted to get experience basically and uh, it was all sort of working towards getting my own salon. Even even fifteen years ago when I was in Magaluf I knew that I wanted to have my own salon, so I knew I had to do all these things first. I like that, actually. I love you sharing that. It's, you know, there's a reason to why you're doing all these things. What, you know, the process is great, but there, there's still an end goal to all of this. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, somebody offered, somebody said to me about maybe 12 years ago, I said, you know, I've got a bit of money. I need to, you know, I want to go into business with somebody. I think you'd be ideal for it. Uh, it had a really good concept. And crazy enough, it was similar to the concepts that are out there now with uh, barbers. And sometimes, you know, you can get a beer in the barbers and you can go and play on the PlayStation and all that sort of thing. So he wanted to set up a salon a bit like that. And I turned him down, not because I didn't want his money. <laughs> I turned him down because I just didn't have the experience. And I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to walk into a salon and have my own salon without these accolades and experience and these uh, this community and uh, connections that I have now, basically, because That's I knew I wouldn't be able yeah. to grow a team. I wouldn't be able to use my experience to grow a team. So it's important for you then the time leading into this, rather than just go and do it because I can do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so everything needs a process, I think. And um, I planned this years ago, and um, I can't believe we're here now. Twelve years, <laughs> what fifteen years? So talk us on a little bit, sort of sun. So you're, are you based in Leeds at this point still, then, Matthew? So you've got all this going on. 2012, lots happening. Working within a salon, employed? Uh, yeah, employed salon. So um, I was working in the city centre for about ten years. Uh, worked up to a creative director, um, and then. Yeah, yeah, I'm just working in an employed salon. So uh, that's all I knew at the time. I didn't even know self-employed salons even existed. So I knew that <laughs> I've heard of a mobile hairdresser. So my, my stepmom used to do a bit of that as well. But um, 
But yeah, I didn't even know self-employed salons existed. Did you go on to become a self-employed hairdresser? Uh, did you sort of think, look, I'm, I'm employed, I fancy a change? I mean, walk us on a little bit to that. Yeah, so I I like to think I became a self-employed hairdresser by default. <laughs> uh, it was totally accidental. Basically, I uh, had this crazy few years, like I said, winning the Coloured Trophy, you know, it guy. I ended up getting into the Fame team as well, the Fellowship Fame team, uh, which was absolutely amazing. Then there was the, the ID team as well, L'Oreal ID team. There was, you know, there's a few different teams I've been in, but you I, it got to a point where I was spending so much time outside the salon doing all these amazing things uh, that your mind starts wondering. And I think this is a, a bit of a dangerous thing, especially if anybody's listening that have employed staff uh, or even self-employed staff, you know, and you, you know what it's like. You end up, um, you, you know, spent two days a week in London for like the best part of two years and you end up thinking the grass is green on the other side, you know. And I started thinking, uh, you know, maybe I'm at that point now where I don't need a salon yet, but maybe I need to take my, that side of the career a bit further now and maybe go to London. So I basically set my sights on going to London. I was like, right, I need to I need to go to London. If I want to be the best, I want to work on or I always wanted to do like, you know, some more fashion work. I wanted to do more TV work before I had my own salon and everything else. So I said, like, you know, maybe I need to go and do a few years in London now. So I started the process of, um, you know, working out what I was going to do in London. So um, in a nutshell, I basically started looking for jobs down there. I told my wife was really cool with it. So she said, right, we'll, we'll, we'll do it then. So we started wrapping it up here, up in Leeds. Um Stupidly, I not told the boss that I was working for at the time that that's what my idea was. Um, I, it was one of them situations where I'm sure a lot of people will recognise this, where you just basically, you, you feel like you can't tell your boss stuff like this because you don't want to upset them. And you don't want to, you don't want to make them, you obviously don't want to lose your job, but you don't want to create a, a situation that you don't want to be in, especially when I have no sort of solid idea of what I was going to be doing. So I started the process off. Unbeknown to me, the the boss already knew that what my what my ideas were, and he unfortunately um, he was a bit of a hard to talk about this because basically I, I I I was looking on the computer one day and I was looking through some client details and um, I basically went home that night and I got a, got a phone call the next day and I had to go into work and. The boss said to me, you know, you know, I know what your plans are and, you know, and I can see that you've been on the computer and uh, I know that you're, you know, you're going to go and work somewhere else. Um, so, you know, on that note, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, you know, you, you're basically you're going to have to leave now. Uh, so you're dismissed. And I was like, you're joking. This is not, this is not the plan. <laughs> um uh, it was like, you know, you know, I said to him, I, I promise you, I'm not looking anywhere in Leeds. You know, this this is not the plan. This I've, I've got this idea. I want to move to London, blah, blah, blah. But he, um, you know, put me in a, a bit of a position. So um, I, I panicked, basically, and I had to leave. And it was probably the worst, like, week of my life. And I contacted people in the area and I said, look, I've got no, basically got no job. And, and my mate that worked at, uh, he's called Josh Goodwin, who who actually works with uh, at Tint now. Uh, he was working at his self-employed salon around the corner, and he said to me, "Mate, this is the busiest salon you'll ever come into." He said, "It'll be cash in hands." He says, "You'll you'll make an absolute mint, basically." So he said, "If you come here and your idea is that you want to go and move to London, you've got no responsibilities now. You don't have to. You can come and go as you please. You can do what you want. You can." can put your plan together before you get to London. So he said, just check it out. So I went, it was quite, pretty crazy. I went into this self-employed salon in Leeds and the boss in there, he was a bit of, um, should we say, he was a bit, he was quite chilled out. And he, he said to me, why, you know, why don't you, why don't you just come around the back? So he took me around the back and he took me through the salon, out the back door, and there was a pub around the back. And he sat down with a pint and just said, like, I'll do you a 50-50 deal. So basically, 
He said, uh, everything you earn, I earn 50% of it. And you can earn 50%. He said, I'll make sure you're fully booked up by next week. And he, to be honest, he, he kept his word. I was fully booked up and I earned 50% of what I earned. So it was a whole new ball game for me. I just so you were quids in. Something. I was quids in, yeah. It was amazing. So this sounds for a lot of people, they'll be thinking to themselves, well, okay, look, Matthew's had a bit of a ride here. It's been yeah, quite a journey. Yeah, an award-winning, real high um, profile in the industry. Uh, and, and you're kind of working in a, a salon, which to me, I mean, I don't know. I'm sorry if I sound a bit out of order here, but sounds a bit sort of back alley kind of salon setup. I, I'm not sure if I'm offending somebody here, but uh, <laughs> um, I it mean, wasn't the best setup, but it, I, it was a means to end for me at the moment. Yeah, at this of point of life. I realised that if I went there, I had no commitments. I could come and go as a police, and and the boss knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I basically said, like, I need to be, uh, I need to be able to crack on with this plan to go to London. He was really cool with it, so. Uh, and it was ready money. Yeah. So um, you're, you're loving it, aren't you? This has got to be great. You're, you're loving the way you're working, surely. Oh, I was depressed. It was the worst thing ever. It was, no, we, you know, the money doesn't buy, I mean, it doesn't, you know, pardon the problem, it doesn't really buy the happiness, you know, it doesn't really buy um, everything else that you get in the industry. So, you know, you get the support that you get from a, an employed salon, like your profile support or your training support and everything else. And, you know, I walked into there and uh, the money was really, really good, don't get me wrong, but I'm not driven by money, to be honest. Uh, I Like I said before, I like a process. I like to achieve things. And the idea of walking into there was um, it was pretty depressing for me, to be honest. And the first thing I did, I said, well, I worked out how much money I was going to earn within the first month. And I got in contact with a PR company and I said, like, I need you to look after me, basically. I need PR. I need to keep my name out in the industry. So when, I, when I've when got enough money, I can move to London and I can I can start working for another salon again and just carry on as I was six months ago, you know, with my name in lights in the industry, if you like. So, um, so basically, I spent, the, I spent the best part of six months. No, not six months. What about, that, uh, about six weeks to two months. I spent um, at this self-employed salon trying to work it out. Um, I had a few interviews down in London, and I basically I got a job at Brooks and Brooks, which was amazing. So that was that was an achievement in its own right. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And they're, they're amazing. So they offered me a job, and we the money wasn't amazing. Um, not to not nothing to do with them guys it's just because i was going down there without a clientele and everything else um but i i decided we we would we would check it out so we basically got this we got this apartment sorted out in london and um, my wife got a job working in a law firm down there and uh, uh, she works in hr and off we were off we went so we got rid of our we got rid of our apartment in leeds and we moved. We were just about to move down there. I got a phone call from the agency, and the landlord had just decided on that day that he was actually going to give the apartment to somebody else. <laughs> I was like, "You're actually having a laugh." So uh, apparently, it's dog eat dog down there with a, with, with apartments and uh, rentals and things. And people literally like they'll put they'll put flats on with multiple agencies. And that's what he'd been doing. He put a flat on with a multiple agent, and uh, he just decided they they were going to pay more, so he was going to give it to somebody else. So we were in a right situation then. So my, my, I wasn't due to start work, so I'm not confirmed anything with Brooks and Brooks. Um, but my wife started work down there, and we lived in a in a mate's house for like a couple of weeks or so. And it was it was a really really stressful time to be honest, and. Uh, she, she didn't particularly like a job down there and she was doing it all for me anyway. Um, I was trying to find a flat in this meantime, but I couldn't find anywhere for us to stay. So uh, we ended up coming back to Leeds and we just had to do some like wrapping up in Leeds of some things in the, the old flat we were living in. And uh, I just remember sitting down this flight, it was an empty flat. And I said like, are we just, are we just going mad here? Because this is like the most stressful time ever. Should we just, I said, like, I don't know if we can live off, like, a wage down there anyway. Um, I don't know if we're, we're too old to be moving down here. And, you know, you don't particularly like your job. 
I said that, you know, this guy, this landlord, he owes us, I think we paid him about, I don't know, four and a half grand or something to, to move down there. So we've given him like a month's rent and a month and a half up front and the deposit as well. So I said, look, he owes us four and a half grand. Should we just get it back and go on holiday? <laughs> so she, she basically, she said, let's do it. You know, I don't like this job anyway. Let's go. So we ended up, um, we got this money back and we booked um, a round the world trip. And we ended up like going to Australia, New Zealand, Thailand. We had a great time. It was amazing. So, you know, and just like lockdown, people don't get opportunities like that in their life, you know. And because we have no commitments at all at this point, we just said, let's, let's do it. Let's go traveling. Let's enjoy ourselves. But I, I don't know about yourself, Don, but, you know, I'm sure you've heard the term, you can't, you know, you can't run away from a problem. No. And after, after eight weeks of traveling, uh, we came back and we were like, we're in the same situation now anyway. So, um, so we decided to move back in with my mum in Leeds. Um, and then I just said, like, we need to start putting a decent plan together now and, like, you know, work out, you know, what we're going to do for the next few years. So this guy who owned this um, self-employed salon, he took me back on again. And and my wife got a job back at her old place, which uh, it was never going to be permanent. So, but she got a she got a job back there again. And then we decided we were just going to start putting a plan together for a family, and you know we wanted to have our own salon and everything else. So that's kind of where we were at that point. Right. So, so you're putting this yeah. plan together. So when did the spark happen? Yeah, so the spark, the spark is uh, it's quite interesting. Basically, I I've I kind of got into a situation where it was the money was so good that it was hard to turn down, but equally, right, annoyingly, I really, really love the industry and I enjoy everything else that I do in the industry and. I wasn't getting that opportunity to do anything like that because I was working for a self-employed salon and trying to work in around people that weren't really bothered about the industry. So that there was, was a, so in that setup then, Matthew, it, it kind of stopped the opportunities of doing the industry side of, of the yeah education brand work. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yeah. So there was right. a few people doing it. Don't get me wrong. Like my mate, Josh, who was there at the time and a few of the others, but it wasn't um, it wasn't a collective. It didn't feel like everybody was really pushing together to uh, encourage people and encourage that side of the industry. The boss wasn't really into it, as you, you probably would have guessed. Um, he wasn't really into it, and I realised that if anybody was going to do it, we had to do it, and we had to be them people who, if I was the boss, or if I owned if I owned the salon, I could be the one that was driving all the industry stuff and the creativity and everything else. So I basically said to um, I said to my mate who used to be my who actually used to work at the salon that I worked at previous to that. He was working at this self employed salon as well. I said like I'm gonna I'm basically gonna set up a salon. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get an employed salon. I'm gonna have to set up an employed salon because I want to get back involved with the industry again. And at that moment in time, I, I just presume that everybody that wanted to get involved in industry work had to be employed. And that was just kind of how it went, basically. And and then he was like, no, mate, if, you know, if you're going to do it, you need to sort of, you need to find a gap in the market that nobody's playing in, basically. Why would you, why would you want to set up an employed salon where you have, um, uh, people that get these opportunities but not earning this type of money that we're on here you need if you want to find something new and do something uh, you know playing an area that nobody's playing in in the in in the market you need to be trying to do both basically and at that point he basically said to me i'll go in with you if you want to do it we'll do it together so he, so we basically started hatching a plan for tint then and the idea was that we were going to create a salon which it was a self-employed salon, so an opportunity for people to earn, you know, decent wage and be uh, a bit more independent and be, be, become however they want to be, whilst given the opportunities to be creative, uh, have an industry profile, and and be able to be supported by everybody at Tint, uh, including myself and my business partner. So 
that's kind of like that's where that came from. And uh, unbeknown to us, there was places like uh, Hunter Collective, the Social, and places like that that were they were already sort of hatching that plan, if not already you know ahead of us at the time, already doing that. So it you know when they started doing it, it gave us confirmation that it can be done. Right. Okay. So. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So you're kind of seeing this. You're almost merging this too, aren't you? Together, the, the professionalism of an employed exactly, with, the, yeah. with the creative freedom and, and you know great money to be earned as a self-employed and hatching this plan to then bring this together uh, as tint. So, yeah. where so, did you set this up? What sort of costs and what were you looking for with the setup for this to make the so, right space that you wanted? So the benefit of working with an employed salon. And the benefit of already working with a self-employed talent is I can pick the best of both. Uh, you know, we we knew we wanted a creative environment, obviously, because you know we are creatives, and um, we wanted somewhere people can educate within that creative environment. Um, but we also want to give the the feeling of individuality and space for the self-employed stylists. So we said we need to find a big space. Um, it doesn't have to be right in the city centre because, it, to be honest, it, it doesn't scare me being a, not being on the the high street. So, even though we're very close to the city centre, we're we're in the sort of areas that are slightly cheaper. We said we, you know, if we're going slightly out of town, we can we can get somewhere bigger, um, and we can also you know fit the criteria that we're after. So, we we looked outside of town. We found this uh, two thousand square foot. Um, I guess it's a bit like a warehouse-looking building. Um, no, inside it's a bit more of a warehouse-looking building, but it used to be a row of shops with some flats above it. Uh, it's still a row of shops and there's still flats above it. Um, however, it's um, uh, the shops are now like bars and things like that and restaurants, and there's uh, you know a few more residential areas and a hotel behind us and a car park and things like that. So... It's um, it's really sort of built up, up over the last like two years, three years or so, which is brilliant. Um, so we basically wanted that space, and the idea was that Tim was going to be a modular salon, and the salon was going to be able to move to however the environment took us. So each each section within the salon uh, isn't attached to the floor. Uh, the 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 couches are not attached, obviously. Even the speakers move around, and within minutes, I can literally like open the whole space out into an event space. And that was the reason you done that to, to the, create. Yeah, the reason we did that is because the, the self-employed stylist um, has the space around them, and there's loads of space. But also, we wanted to offer the self-employed stylist um, an opportunity to do anything they want in there, basically. So, if they wanted to do a photo shoot in there, they could do. Um, some people have wanted to do courses in there. They can do it. Um, you can do an event in there if they like to as well. Um, but equally, we're also um, offering the space out to different manufacturers in the industry as well that want to use the space to to rent to profile their brand as well. So it, it sort of fits a lot of different criteria, if you like. Love it. So yeah, I mean, you really are talking a collaborative whole space here aren't we and i'm actually just on your instagram page just looking at the um inside the salon there's a lovely one here with your team and the, the aesthetics of it are so cool i love the exposed brickwork and beams and wood flooring i mean was that a look that you really planned out and um, or did it, you just work to that building <laughs> um i think it's really important to work to a building um it's important to have a framework so you have to understand your brand and understand what, what you're about and everything else. Uh, we want we we're all about sort of longevity. So you know, uh, keeping things a bit more timeless, and we're hoping the sound itself will uh, stand the test of time. It's not too modern. Uh, it's more classic. Uh, it's not old fashioned. So it's got that it's got that right balance to it. Uh, it looks really stunning, by the way, Matthew. I've got. I gotta say, it looks absolutely stunning. As you were telling me this, sorry, listeners, you're probably thinking, how rude of Dom is just saying <laughs> jumping. No? But I just want people to go and check out your space, Tint Lee's Instagram account, because I have to say, if I was certainly up in the in the north area, I would want to work in this space. I'm just looking at the beautiful light. It looks light and airy, and so much space around people. 
Yeah, well, we spoke about this before, Dom, haven't we? So if you want to come and rent a, <laughs> rent a space for I wish week, I was a bit... You know, uh, I would love to, yeah, honestly. I, w- I would be jumping at it. It looks... Uh, <laughs> Uh, get started, Dom, coming up for the day. It'd be amazing. Well, do you know, I mean, there's nothing to stop us. I mean, this is, you know, we could go into this bit as, you know, within this wonderful interview, you know, how that yeah. is the option for people, isn't it? I guess that... Uh, exactly, that yeah. It's a bit like Hunter Collector, if you like. You know, it's an open space. It's a free house. Um, you know, and it kind of leads us on to what we're trying to achieve as a brand as well. We just want to create... We want to tear up the rule book, if you like, and allow people to... Um, feel like the, everybody's welcome here, basically. Everybody's welcome at Tint, um, you know, and we want people to come and see us and, I don't know, share the community, if you like. Yeah. Okay, so let's – so we've got the space. You've opened it up. And What year did you open up Tint? Uh, 2017, the craziest year of my life. <laughs> right, um, okay. So we – we were obviously planning the, the business and that was pretty stressful. And then my son was born – uh, he was born in May, and then we opened the salon up at the beginning of April. So, yeah, it was pretty. I'm um, sorry, I can work that out now. So, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> we opened the salon at the beginning of May. Yeah. And he was born at the end of May. So, yeah, it was a bit of a crazy year that was. So, uh, so uh, another so anniversary coming to, up. I'm trying to learn the learn the business, learn the salon, and everything else, but also trying to work out how to be a dad for the first time as well it was like the hardest thing ever so but you're obviously doing it right so you've opened up the doors you you you, you become a dad and was it easy to attract the right people to come and be part of the team at tint as self-employed well you see going back to what we were talking about earlier on we were talking about building a community uh you know, and luckily I'd already built up a strong community within Leeds, um, you know, and I already knew a lot of people and I kind of relied, um, gambled that a few people would actually, you know, want to come over to us once we'd open our doors and prove that we can do a good job. So uh, it kind of, you know, that, that worked out. And my, my business partner is a super nice guy and he's got a lot of friends as well. And we kind of, we were confident that people would come through and we wanted to show people that we it, this whole self-employed thing can be done in a real professional manner and that's kind of what we've tried to demonstrate with tint because it let's be totally honest here matthew it, it it's a it's a massive topic in our industry it almost becomes a little bit tiring in hearing it because you know there, there's reasons for both isn't there there's benefits for some people that want to be employed there's benefits for self-employed but i think the whole problem why self-employed as maybe got a bad rap a little bit because maybe the image and the way that it has been set up in the previous days, it's been, you know, very easy to just, yeah, come on, 50, 50, grab your chair, off you go. But yeah, exactly. you I mean, are doing, like you said earlier, you know, you really are taking the best and it sounds like you'll really want to, you know, shine the beacon of positive light on self-employed freelance hairdressers yeah exactly and that's coming from somebody who never wanted a self-employed salon um i believe we're doing things like really super professionally we've tried to take all like sell positives out of the each really and giving people the opportunity to earn a decent wage and have you know buy a nice house and you know, and have a have a family and everything else. I'm not saying you can't do that with an employed salon, but having that freedom and possibly earning a bit more money helps, basically. And, you know, and but equally, we've been able to offer people that opportunity to profile themselves in the industry. But importantly, as an individual and not just part of a brand, um, you know, we, we're obviously really proud of Tint and we've got an amazing art team. Um, you know, everybody's competing in uh, various competitions. You know, we've got so, a guy in the so ID team. You've, got, the an art, you've got an art team. I, you know, I don't hear this with self-employed salons. Exactly, yeah. So we've got an art team. Um, I mean, I wrote a little list here because I knew you were going to ask these questions. But, you know, like, you know, there's four of us at London Fashion Week this year. Uh, we, we've got L'Oreal Colour Trophy semis, BHA semis, um you know we've got like 
I'm just reading off this. So we've got some girl in um, Verity. She's in the Project X at the moment with the fellowship. Uh, you know, we've got. So I'm just reading off this little list in here. So That's we've cool. got to Trend Vision semi-finals twice already. You know, and that's all. Um, it's all come off the back of the art team, really, and you know, people communicating within the team and um, sharing their ideas and doing things as a team, just like we did when we won the Colour Trophy. Amazing. So, so, but you know, so, but they're still to, self-employed, yeah. but they're part of a team. Exactly, yeah. So, I love it. That's great. Obviously, there's no, no pressure to be part of the art team. You know, you, you are self-employed, so you can do what you want. But... Um, but we, you know, we we only look to take on staff that really want to be involved with tint and everything else that's about it. Um, but going back to what I was saying before, it's about the individual as well. So we want to profile individual people. So even though tint's got an amazing art team, it's all about the individual craft as well. So you know, if you look at our art team now, we're not just about cutting hair. We're not just about colouring hair or doing hair, hair extensions, but I guarantee we've got people that can fit that criteria depending on what the requir- requirement is. Um, and I think that's what's quite special about what we've got going on at Tint at the moment. What you've done, Matthew, is you've created your dream place that you would want to be a self-employed hairdresser at. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the amount of times that, you know, I was at it's an employed salon and, uh, a job would come through, and I wasn't allowed to because it didn't fit the uh, the salon brief. And uh, I don't, I'm not really into that really. I think if the individual wants to do it, and so long as it's not, um, I don't know, it's not going to in, you know, in, I guess it's not going to damage the reputation of the salon. Uh, I don't think it's uh, a problem really, and people should be able to celebrate what they do best, basically. So. What's the challenges? I mean, it is, all this is great, but it's got to be saying, why doesn't everybody do this if this works? Uh, the challenges, uh, the two um, fundamental challenges to having a self-employed salon are um, retail. I'm sure everybody's aware of that. You can't, you can't force people to sell retail. Uh, we live in a different world now, though, in regards to like there's a lot of retail sales online, so... It, it doesn't feel as bad as now, you know, not like the olden days where you would probably hit a lot of bigger margins within retail and you couldn't really enforce that, obviously. Um, and I don't think, um, I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't think self-employed salons earn any more than what a, a employed salon does. So what I'm saying is the directors, i.e. myself, and my business partner, we, we, you know, we, we're not on mega, mega, mega wages or anything like that. I'm not, like I said before, I'm not really like I'm not really driven by money, but you know we do put a lot of effort into it, um, and you know it's a well-known fact that I guess self-employed salon directors don't earn as much as employed salons. That's all. Um, so how do you earn the money then, Matthew? Yeah, if, so you, if you don't we, mind we me asking that question, we from tin, just like you know, just like everybody else, and I think that's really important as well. Uh, we work we work crazy hours, me and my business partner. You know, we do, we're doing our clients every day, uh, and I really enjoy it. And we rent off the business just like everybody else does. We're all part of it. At the moment, it's just uh, it's a bit of a pension pot at the moment. Um, but we're not, you know, we're not we're not really bothered at that point. To be honest, we're just trying to drive the uh, the business, I guess, and see where it ends up. So, if I'm a hairdresser who's listening to this, uh, which <laughs> that's pretty much all our audience it's all hairdressers and barbers that listen and they're listening they're thinking i would love to work in this space because you've got uh, uh, directors there that are really engaged in the industry you're connected in the industry you know what's going on so naturally if you are engaged in the industry i would want to be in a space with you because your knowledge and they're thinking, look, I want to go here. What have they got to do? What's going to be the setup for them to that process? What can they expect? Can they only work so many days? What no, are they going it's, to- um, it's a total freedom, basically. We're open on Sundays, um, but you basically you pay as a flat rate. So there's no 50-50 situations or anything like that. Um, you pay as a flat rate and you come in and you work within our space. Um 
you know that that's it basically so, right, so we, it's that that simple so you're in there now also yeah. I, i've got to ask as a self-employed stylist you wash hair yourself you have to tidy your space is that something that you have to do as well is it you know you just got to look after everything or you know what about reception what about all these things where you know traditionally employee salons have these but you know self-employed don't you got to do everything well going back to what i was saying about wanting a uh, self-employed salon with employed benefits so we have everything so um okay we have a few house rules so you know you know, please tidy section, that sort of thing. But uh, you, we do have five assistants. Uh, we have a receptionist. Uh, we've got an what, And these are employed? Educator. Pardon? And these are employed? They're all employed, yeah. So we've got oh, in-house educators as well. Um, you know, we've got we've got all these. We've got we've basically got everything you'd ever imagine in an employed salon. Uh, the one thing I need to point out, which what we talked about earlier on, is that uh, in order to apply for Tint as well, you need to have uh, liability insurance and an accountant, uh, which is really important to us as well. Because, like I say, we want to do things, you know, properly, and yeah, you know, it has to start off with things like that. Do, do you? Uh, so they have to have an accountant. Is there any part of you guys that can offer that to your team? Because I always think that's a nice package for me. If I'm going to a place, I'd love it if somebody could offer me. Um, you know, we can help you with your accountancy, managing, branding, da, da, da. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So basically, if somebody applies to the job, we think they're suitable for tin. Uh, we uh, we get them to a trade test. We still need to see what the work's like. Uh, we'd sit them down, have a chat with them, and ex- explain what we're about. Um, and the way we view it is, like, they pay us a flat rate. Uh, everybody pays the same amount, and uh, we see it as a consultancy. So not only are they getting the salon and the opportunities to, you know, work within the space, do a photo shoot or whatever they want to do, um, but we they take us as, um, as on board as well. So we are their consultant. So if they need to find an accountant, we'd be able to find them an accountant. If they want to um, get a new PDQ machine, because everybody needs their, their own PDQ machine as well, we'd be able to source that for them. If they need to know about uh, liability insurance or anything like that, uh, you know, we we do a course with them if they needed to a course to learn these sort of things. So, or if they want looking to get more training, or, or they want to open some doors within the industry, which we we might be able to help with that as well. Um, so yeah, or if there, yeah, another thing we do as well, we we sell the product back to the stylist. So we what we recognise very early on as well is um, the kickbacks that you get from a lot of uh, manufacturers. Um, we realised if we had an employed salon, uh, sorry, self-employed salon with uh, people bringing their own products in, uh, we wouldn't be able to get a lot of these kickbacks because we weren't hitting particular sort of targets that you're, you're expected to hit as a um, as a salon. So even though people can use what they want and bring in what they want, we also stock a full house of L'Oreal and Weller as well. Um, so people can actually come in and, um, just use any any product they like, basically, from them two ranges. And the way we work is you basically choose the, the product that you want, you go over to the computer system, you scan the product through the computer, and then you just get a bill for it at the end of the week. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm not shy to say that we're trying to add, we don't, we don't charge any more for the product, we don't add anything on extra for it, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to build our relationship with uh, product manufacturers build up our, our point system and try and get the kickback so we can actually spend it back on the salon and, you know, and boost and, the and team. And also basically. brands want to work with you and, you know, they yeah, want exactly, you to yeah. do, you know, educational work for them because, you know, that's obviously, you know, I know that's a massive passion of you guys with your art team and training people within the industry. Exactly, yeah. So we've, um, last year we, we started working with um, a lady. She, she does like a lot of, um, how can you say, a lot of, I'm trying to think what I'm trying to say now. So, like, doing – she does, like – she teaches us how, how we should be sort of evolving our business. And one thing we recognise is the individual craft that I was talking about earlier on um, and bringing individual people within the art team um, to be able to educate back out to the industry. So we've um, – the back end of the sound, we've just turned it into an education space. So the whole back wall has been mirrored now. Uh, and like I say, we live in a modular space. We can move a few sections back and turn it into an educational area. So 
the individual stylist now is now doing a, a train the trainer course with Leon Brown, who works at Tin, and they're all learning how to educate basically. So within the next like year or so, working like you say, going back to what you're saying, working with these different manufacturers, we'll be able to offer courses uh, within Tin, um, and people will be basically teaching their individual craft back to other hairdressers. So it's quite an exciting time actually. Oh to be my goodness, oh, it's. I, I'm stand. I feel excited for it, and I have to say, if I was going to open up a salon and, and do something, I, I listen to so many models, and they're so great, and everybody's got their different ways of doing it. But I, I, how you're doing it, yeah, I think that's 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 good. I, I get it. I love it. I think you combine every element that works really well, and you know, if it's if employing is not for you, and self-employed is the route that your business wants to go. Listen to this. Do it professionally, like what Matthew is doing, like how Kai's doing it, like Hunter's doing it. They've all got their different ideas and different things, but you're doing it so well. And and that's important because I think we're in a an era, as I said earlier, Matthew, sometimes self-employed have been looked down upon a bit in society. I always feel like, you know, we're not quite as valued, are we? And we're a little yeah, bit... The, the... It, it, like you say, we've, we've been on both ends of the, the scale. I, you know, I... Uh... I really stick up for self-employed now. I'm not saying I didn't before, but I totally get it. But we were saying as well before we came on air that um, it's almost like with where we are with lockdown and you know employed workers getting eighty percent of their salary uh, covered. Well, the yeah. government's kind of gone and done that for self-employed too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think there it is. It's like it's. It's been said by the government that self-employed people are, are treat the same as employed people, and it's literally just been announced in the last few weeks. You know, given given the self-employed people eighty percent back, as well as the employed people, I think it's like it just it speaks volumes to me. That's all. Yeah, it does because the country is so made up of self-employed people. I mean, I'm director of my productions company, but I am still a self-employed hairdresser and have been for a big period of my life. And yeah, I'm very proud of self-employed, you know, and, um, yeah, and we should do. And I think it, it, like I say, we're not here to ever say that's right for you. This is the right model. All we're exactly, here to say yeah. is offering it's... choice and it's offering different models and, you know, what works for you. And, and I, you're somebody who loves the industry. I think you love brand. I think you love education. And I think it, it, you, as I said to you, you, you've brought this into your business, how you want it to be. And it's about that. And a team comes over to me so much of what you're doing. Your team is so important. Oh, massive. The team's everything, isn't it? And I think uh, just like any, any business when you're choosing the people that you want to work with you need to choose properly basically and do your homework basically um you know we don't just take anybody on i prefer to have a salon of five five hairdressers that are really keen and really sort of conscious about the, the tin and the brand and everything else than having 20 hairdressers that don't really give it so you know like it's really important for me to have the right people around us we we are a proper team, you know. Like we do things all the time together as a team, and we're in a big WhatsApp group, and we're always having banter and you know being creative and everything else. So it's great. just before we go, we're going into long podcast territory again here, but yeah. that's brilliant because that's a great conversation. So I'm, you know, I've said it many times. I don't care anymore. I used to worry about it, but if the content's <laughs> good, I'll go on for as long as we like. As long as people are listening, that's good for me. Um, you also, I just want to go before we do sort of bring this towards the end of the um, uh, podcast. Is you, uh, the, the employed people uh, in your salon, the apprentices, what happens to them once they've qualified? Oh, this is the juicy part of the business. So this is this is the exciting thing for me. Is obviously we want to grow a brand. We want. I want to have a few salons. I want. You know, we sorry, should I say, me and my business partner want to have a few salons. We'd love to have our own products and everything else, but you can't you can't do that unless you're bringing the youth through, basically, um, and you're growing your brand that way. Uh, I didn't, or we, sorry, we didn't want to be in a situation where we were just taking on staff that have got bored of working in employed salons and having loads of, like, uh, people that have come from big salons and people talking about the great times working at all these other salons that have been at. So we said... If we're going to have like trainees. We want to train into the highest standard and tra- train into a tint standard. 
And when they're qualified, we, it wasn't going to be a case of, right, come on then, right, self-employed now and off you go. We were going to then nurture them for the next, like, five to ten years or so or before, you know, until we think or they think they're ready to become self-employed. Um, the reason being because we want to give them the opportunities that we had before we were self-employed, basically. You know, we we had some really good opportunities when we were employed. And, you know, I'm not going to deny that. My my business partner was a manager, and I worked to, to create directors um, uh, level, I think, to, to just say to them, look, you're self-employed, you've got to do it all on your own now. You've got to achieve these sort of things on your own at the age of 18 is – is, is crazy so you know we want to give the people the opportunity to do that basically in the same way we have and i think that will be the uh the defining point for growing the tint brand basically oh, i love it and you're going to grow this brand i know I, i'm i'm absolutely convinced that you're going to become a powerhouse in the industry oh thank you no <laughs> seriously <laughs> i think you. with your uh your whole philosophy around it i think what you're creating Great name as well, by the way. So it's a strong Thank name. You. Yeah, oh, there's a, there's a story there as well. <laughs> oh, is it? Go on. While we're we, at it. When I, when I was planning to we're have We're on lockdown, so we've got loads of time, so we can all listen <laughs> for ages. <laughs> when I was planning to have the employed song, we wanted to have, um, well, I wanted at the time, because I was planning it on my own before my business partner came on. I wanted to have this, um, I wanted to have the USP and... Uh, the USP was going to be um, a colouring salon. So basically, we were just going to colour hair. And we called it Tint. And then we realised that I'm not a colour specialist. And, well, I'm not really that passionate about colour either. So we were just like, you know, what, what am I doing this for? So I <laughs> I really liked the name, carried on with the name and just went with that. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a great name. And the aesthetics, and again, your, your whole taste level, I say this regularly, it's a famous word of mine or a couple of words, taste level. Um, <laughs> uh, it, you have a great taste level your hair work and i'm going to send all our listeners to the right place to go and check out everything that you do in fact you give the shout out to your links matthew so where where's your website you know well if you look at my own link now um i've got tin uh sorry no matthew Sutcliffe tin it's probably full of kids now because i've had two children the last <laughs> three years um so I, I very rarely post like a lot of my own work on there uh, my main drive at the moment is to um, profile people at tint and tint the brand itself so look at tint leads and uh, just simple as tint leads yeah um and you'll see a lot of our work on there basically our our catwalk work to salon work to you know you know like i say the tint takeover that we're doing next week so i'll be yeah. following that okay. like, so we'll, can we all look into this tint takeover then is that a live yeah exactly yeah so we're running through the stories i'll probably do a few posts on um on the actual platform and just talk about what we're doing with it so okay. yeah it's really really good so you we'll all keep a look, yeah we'll keep a, a lookout for it i and- know our guy josh as well um josh goodwin he's doing babbliss takeover this week so that'll be good as well so and you're still involved with babbliss aren't you Matthew? yeah exactly yes yeah. so i'm i'm a babbliss ambassador with josh um you know they've really really looked after me and i mean and josh for the last like you know forever forever long maybe 10 years or so now yeah. and uh you know be forever grateful for that brilliant man you you're just the top man honestly just i really like you uh honestly i think i like your style i like what you're doing i like what you stand for uh, and i love tin and you know come down more towards our area and i'll certainly come and do a day <laughs> so yeah well get the brand out leads, you never know we might have a to- uh, come to Leicester. That, yeah, well, Leicester's not too far from me. I'll go to Leicester. That'll right. be all right. Tint Leicester, that'd be good. Yeah, well, there, there's, there, there's <laughs> definitely a possibility in this. I think absolutely in this region. I've said it to my wife, you know, whilst now my productions company is getting busier and busier for me, it's, you know, I'm, I really only see myself doing a little day here or so, and, but I've still got my rural view, uh, rural salon. So some ways I almost want a place like yours. Just to come and work with a team for a day would be nice. I, I guess. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. That'd be brilliant. You yeah. should do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's certainly something I'm interested in. Look, Matthew, it's been absolutely fantastic. I just love what you're doing. I'm, I, I've said that about a hundred times now, so that's becoming a bit boring. <laughs> Thank you. That. Likewise, Tom, I mean, I think it's, you know, I'd love to, you know, mention it. I think you're doing such a great job yourself as well. Oh, so, thank you, mate. I tell um, you what, you know, I'm I've... really excited for 
you know, where you're going to take this in the future, you know? Yeah, so am I. I mean, it's, um, yeah, I'm just excited. But it's all you lot who make it. Honestly, I'm, I'm just using you guys to bring yeah. the content. Well, I'm like not a great educator. Team, you know, like, it's, the, it's the team behind it, isn't it? You know, it's the process and everything yeah, else that, is. you know. It's phenomenal. I love it all. And I, I'm, I just get excited by a generation of people that are doing things differently. That's what really uh, excites me. And obviously lockdown's coming to an end, so you're preparing for that. We spoke about all that at the start. So, yeah, I mean, ex- yeah, I'm sure you'll be raring to go again, won't you, once, once the green light comes on? Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait, to be honest. I, I can't wait. It's given me a really good time to reflect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, yeah, the know, industry is going to be a different ideas. place, isn't it? I mean, we, we we can't deny that. I mean, it's going to look different, but... And, it's, you know, what I didn't mention earlier on is um, I think what's quite interesting is for a lot of people who have... Um, been given a bad name for being self-employed stylists and everything else i think uh, this lockdown has probably changed a lot of it as well now because like i said the government have given everybody that 80 percent back uh and i think it's probably like changed a lot of um the way people deal with things in regards to the tax uh, situations within self-employed salons as well uh, and i think going forward if there is anybody like tax avoiding or anything like that they definitely won't be doing it in the future <laughs> well, so, said, well they're going to be ones who are paying the price for that now because they won't exactly be getting yeah, I mean, hopefully all. that should you know it should it should change the bond slightly and make people think that you know you know maybe i should be paying that little bit more tax or you know maybe not <laughs> avoiding tax or whatever i mean i personally don't know anybody that does but i know people probably do out there and they're the ones giving us a bad name, basically. Absolutely, hundred percent on that. Well uh, said, my man. Really good. Look, Matthew. Before we sign out to um, this uh, great time in your company, uh, we're going to have our last five, which has nothing to do with hair whatsoever. But sometimes the questions still get answered in hair because we're so obsessed by our industry. Uh, so, uh, question <laughs> one to you: Away from work, how do you best like to spend your time? Oh, let me see. Um, well, just at home with the children and things, you know. You can't be being a parent in my eyes. I think it's the best thing ever. So, um, I love it. It's brilliant. Um, I used to play a bit of football, but I've just injured myself recently, so I, I haven't played for about six months. Question two: What's the one song that makes you jump up and hit the dance floor? Um, Big Fun by Inner City. Good call on that one. Uh, how are you best spending your time in isolation? Oh, I'm trying to do a bit of hair. I've, I'm going to start doing my wife's hair. Um, you know, I need to keep up to date with everything and keep up with it. It's really hard work with the kids and everything, but I'm trying to do a bit of that. Um, I'm just generally enjoying the outdoor life, you know, the garden and everything else. Like we said, the weather's good. But one thing I've really got into, which is probably quite sad, actually, I've really got into stocks and shares at the moment. Um, <laughs> since... Since lockdown, I've been just keeping an eye on it and trying to see what how it's how it's panning out from an economical point of view, and I've really quite sadly got into it. Okay, question four: What was the last big treat you gave to yourself? Um, I don't buy myself much, but I bought a TV about six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I bring that up because it's uh, apparently it's a pointless TV because we we already had a TV and it already worked apparently. So, lastly, tell us one more thing that we really need to know about Matthew Sutcliffe. Uh, Matthew Sutcliffe's salon name is Guy. Uh, I, I started work. I started work about uh, what fifteen years ago, and there was already Matthew there. Right. And it just so happens I started around about bonfire night, so they said, "Oh, let's call him Guy," and I've had the name Guy ever since. <laughs> I will now call you Guy, Matthew Guy. There we are. Matthew Guy. I've had that a few times as well. Ah, brilliant. Well, look, thank you so much, Matthew. It's been a, an epic interview. It really has. And, uh, yeah, cheers. It's Thanks been, so been much great coming in. It's been great. Yeah, it's thank been really you. good. Now, there we have it. Thank you so much then to for Matthew for coming on to the show today. I think we really could take away from that is how you can create a self-employed salon but run it really professionally, run it with the same professionalism of so many employed salons and it can really work. And also I think what came over was the standing that we should now be giving self-employed hairdressers who are doing it the right way. And that's exactly what they're doing at Tint. So thank you, Matthew, for sharing it. Really enjoyable interview that was. 
Now, if you want to go and find out any more on Matthew, go and check out some of his work, the space itself, then we have prepared some images on our show notes for you. And you can find that by going to the link online, which is www.howtocut.it slash EP146. Now, hopefully you're all enjoying these podcasts. Now, if you're new to the show, welcome along. It's something we bring you every Monday morning without fail, some of the biggest names in our industry, as well as some of our rising stars. And the best way to make sure that you never miss any of these episodes is to subscribe to it on your podcast provider. Just search out How to Cut It and you'll find us there. Now, next Monday, I'm going to be in the company of a hairdresser that I know many of you really admire in the UK. She's a Chancellor for the Fellowship of British Hairdressing, as well as the Ambassador for Daviness. She's a freelance hairstylist. Her name is Ashley Hodges. And I've got to know Ashley a long time ago, and it's been a delight to see her journey grow. She is going to be coming onto the show to really share her story and the the battles of burnout that she's had to go through and how that affected her mental health it's a blockbuster you will absolutely love it so make sure you tune in for that next monday now if you want to connect with us at how to cut it we are there on all your social media platforms just search how to cut it we also have our facebook group now which is really starting to bubble up and getting really exciting i want you to become part of it we've got great things planned for it and you can find us on facebook it's our group not page it's our facebook group and it's how to cut it community so come and join that we'd love you to come and be part of the group and start sharing your work within that if you're listening to the podcast on apple itunes please do leave us a rate and a review they help us grow the show and makes people know what they can expect from listening in to the show if you're enjoying the show as well please continue to share your uh, how to cut it posts in your instagram story they are brilliant i love seeing them i see them all come and check them out get people to put their eyes on our show is really good and it helps people that maybe are just losing a bit of interest in the industry to know about our podcast and learn about the different areas of the industry they could go it really does help you all discover your next step so I hope that lockdown's treating you well. I hope you're getting engaged with so many great things that are going on out there. Keep tuning into the podcast. We're there with you every day of the week. We've got so many episodes there. So until next Monday, peace, love and smiles all the way. Goodbye. How to cut it in the hairdressing industry podcast. Taking your hairdressing and barbering careers to the next level.